Paul with CP Addicts back out here at Leadfoot Diesel in Monroe, Georgia today with my cousin Benny. Uh, he's actually taller. Anyways, uh, he is here with Sports 86 F250 that has been obviously highly modified, as can be seen here, but the Bob Banner White pose. Um, he's going to give us some details and kind of some of the why this truck was built, things about the truck, um, just overall in general. So obviously, you know, two tone, but if you don't mind, give us some of the backstory on the truck yeah. itself. It uh, started out solid red, uh, sports dad was the original owner, and it was nothing crazy, nothing special, just a work truck. Um, when his dad passed away, Sport took possession of the truck and heavily modified it. Back then, it still had a gas engine in it. And it was more him and the girlfriend riding down the beach kind of thing in high school. Uh, we all know that vibe. <laughs> and yep. it's what turns most of us into gearheads is going after girls. Yep. And uh, My truck's got to look cool so I can pick up the right. women. Yeah, that's right. So that's when it started out. Uh, once the diesel thing happened, many, many years later, we converted it to 6.0 Power Stroke. So this is the one that's flesh colored and got the stacks in the bed doing the burnout. That's right. Bed. So yep. this is the same truck. Same truck. <laughs> Used to run 12s in the quarter with 6.0 power stroke and it was really not that heavily modified back then. It was just basically a stock 6.0 with a tune. And uh, that evolved into a 6.4 transplant, which never got finished. Uh, customer needed it more than us kind of a deal. So we took, took the back burner and helped them out. And Thankfully that happened because it evolved into this current build, which is a 6.7 power stroke. So not the 6.7 inline Cummins no. tractor motor. No, it actually got a real motor in this truck. That's right. Nobody cares about your Cummins, bro. Exactly. So uh, we went with the 6.7 power stroke because we had a parts truck out back with a watered up flex plate. The customer didn't want to fix it. We got a heck of a deal on the truck and uh, transplanted the motor in here hundreds of hours in the firewall trying to get all that massage and make it fit. Uh, it was worth it though. I think we're the only people on the planet with a bull nose 86 with a 6.7 power stroke in it. Right. So you said that y'all had to modify the firewall heavily. Yeah. So you just, because looking at it, I guess I've already seen it, it looks like it's factory, factory and meant yeah. to be in there. So y'all have got hundreds of hours on that. And then obviously there's not been any corners cut on this no. particular build. No, we, uh, we talked about building our own suspension setup for it. Uh, we decided to showcase the full traction kit. It's just a super nice kit. You can't beat the quality. Well, I, I was noticing the four link and the coilovers and stuff, but it doesn't look to me like an OBS frame under here. So. No, this is a 03 Super Duty frame. So originally it's Lee Springs, which rides like crap. So that's where the full traction kit came in and fixed all the rideability, drivability issues. For so us. what's even more interesting about this is it's not a 6.7 Super Duty frame. It's already got cold buckets and all of that. It was actually, a, I'm assuming a 7.3 frame. Yeah, it was actually a 6.0, early okay, 03. Early 03, 6.0, yep. and y'all have completely modified even all of that to accept a 6.7 right. in it. Yep, so yeah, nothing about this build was easy. Uh, but Sport kind of came in, said what we wanted, turned the guys in the fab shop loose and made it happen. Well, I think that's part of it is like, you know, OBS guys, I guess if you will, like to spend the extra time and put the things together. They, they get this oh, vision yeah, in their head a, and like, you know, it has to be, be buried in, so it better be perfect. Well, and I think that's it. Like, you know, everybody you talk to that's on the road, I had one new or my grandpa had one or blah, blah, blah. Like this sports dad on this truck, now he owns it. And, you know, it's just going to keep going. It's not one of those that you just watered up through in the dumpster, right. like Chevrolet. That's right. So, you know, it, it's it's on it's on the road and it's gonna stay on the road. I did well. I said it's on the road. It's in the showroom. <laughs> Y'all have it in here for an obvious purpose, and that's to, to draw attention and show your attention to detail on things. You could do the same thing with a new a new six seven. Right. Nobody noticed. But nobody would have mouth thrown in. Yeah. I mean, like when I walked in earlier, this is the first thing I noticed yeah. sitting in here. And there's you know tons of offices. This is what an old Ford dealership. So right. I mean, it's it's really dressed up in here, and it's the first thing you notice. You know, so it's, it's definitely an attention getter. But um, so was it super hard to get the six seven in here and, and no, get it I mean, running? Or you know, honestly, the hardest part about it was wiring. There's a lot of hours in wiring. You know, we called Christopher Nelson down here, <laughs> old Lamont. And, Lamont. Uh, he got a lot of the lighting stuff figured out for us, getting it to work with CAN bus, getting the blinkers to blink properly and not be fast versus slow, and all that stuff that 
wiring is not our forte. I mean, we'll yeah. do it. We'll get it running. We'll get it working. But he really helped us out. On he's, a, he's the same guy that came down and did my Bronco project. And I think he spent like four weeks at my house, right. sleeping in my back bedroom, you know, and, and hanging out. He showed up with like three days worth of clothes because it's supposed to be a, just a quick <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> And then there he was four weeks later, you know, still still just kicking and knocking it out. And I mean, like, you can't you can't find a flaw in, in any yeah. of the wiring. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't want something halfway to get it. Yeah, the last thing you want to cheap out on is wiring. You don't want a big build like this going up in flames because you cheaped out and something shorted out. Got butt connectors on everything, right. snow caps. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, how hard was it to get to work with all the OBS dash and steering column and stuff? So as much as we wanted to keep that stuff original, we couldn't. It's just, it's impossible to interface. The gauge cluster has to communicate with the ECM on six, seven power stroke. So we ended up converting the 11 dash to fit in here. All we kept was the bench seat and the door panel. So it's still, it's got a six, seven dash in it, the, yes. the steering wheel and all that. Yep. So you've got all the radio controls. And That's right. So everything works. Yep. Even the power door locks so work the, the, the key, six, seven fob. The key fob will work on the power door locks. And yep. Yep. That is insane. Yeah, show me an 86 with a key fob. <laughs> if one that's that like, still works. Yes, one that still works in factory and all that. I had an 86, I had an 82 that sometimes the power windows work, sometimes the lock to work. You know, it was, it it's was. Gonna kick the door. Basically, you know, <laughs> and then it would work, but it, I mean, it still worked even after all those years. So, you know, y'all got the 16 fives and the boggers on this. Yeah, side for, so we got those from a buddy of ours in California. He basically refurbishes them. And uh, we told him what we wanted, and he had exactly what we were looking for. So we got to keep that classic look. Uh, TSL boggers, sport puts them on everything. Mm -hmm. And we got a Jeep out front with TSLs on a little diesel Jeep. And so you just can't beat that tire as far as the look. And, and well, this is very 90s, yes. 80s, 80s, 90s. Obviously, it's 80 truck, but 90s is when this kind of started right. getting real popular. And about the only thing this truck is missing right now is the 18 shocks in the front with the pink yeah. boots on them. So yeah, we wanted to keep it functional actually be able to take it off road if we want to you know we're not into the pavement princess mall crawler stuff I mean, we want our stuff to perform yeah well i mean obviously this truck is is built to, to go uh, i noticed there's some and there's a few chrome items on here but it's not over the top and right. crazy just so where you don't feel like actually driving the truck that's so. right no and it performs as well as it looks i mean we went we went with a Maryland diesel performance 72 millimeter turbo kit. I think earlier I told you it was an H&S dual fueler. This is actually a BD diesel uh, Scorpion dual fueler kit. Um, we like their wheel, the, the pulley they see yeah. on their kit looks sweet. So we'll go check that out and we'll do a walk around later on. Awesome, okay. So on that walk around, what's the chances of getting this thing fired up so we oh, can hear it? Probably, we can probably make that happen for you guys. You know a guy? Yeah, I know a guy. <laughs> Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to, to show us the truck. Heck yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and the offer to do the walk around and possibly fire it up. So uh, I appreciate all Absolutely. your time today. Thank you. Good seeing you guys. Hey, guys, as always, if you like our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section or send us an email to info at cpaddicts.com. Thanks.